With a rich cultural past and present, and new venues to show them, Hong Kong is a must for artists and art enthusiasts. It's an ever-expanding Asian and global hub. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans Welcome to this edition of Spotlight Hong Kong. You're going to discover some of those new venues and talk with the people behind them. We begin with the flagship of the new West Kowloon Cultural District, the M+. It's a museum plus much more for the visual arts. M+, has been a beehive of activity since the opening late last year. We catch up with its director, Suhania Rafael. Hello, Suhania. Can you give us an update on M+, how have things been despite the COVID restrictions? We've welcomed over a million people since we opened in November. Our museum embodies our ambition, whether it's looking at the large LED screen that screens out into Hong Kong Island, or how the people work with our cinemas, our learning center, or just looking at collections. Can you give us an example of the latest works you're showing? Right now, we have on our LED screen, Ellen Pao, senior Hong Kong artist's work, The Shape of Light. You can see it online for all of those who can't be in Hong Kong. Another venue that recently opened is the Hong Kong Palace Museum, exhibiting works from the one in Beijing. Louis Ng is director. For the first time, Hong Kong has a world-class museum on traditional Chinese art by showing the national art treasures on loan from Palace Museum on a permanent basis. And Louis, one of the temporary exhibits is titled Contemporary Design and Traditional Craft in Dialogue. What's that about? Wow. I, I think that the, um, the exhibits on display are all the gems of collection from uh, Palace Museum. It's about, you know, they're demonstrating, I think, their craftsmanship, their design. One example is a cooler made in the 18th century during the Qing Dynasty. It's an ice chest decorated with wonderful, you know, the metals work. The emperor kept ice during the winter and they kept the ice in the ice chambers. And then during summertime, they cut the ice and then put the ice into this, you know, ice chest. Well decorated. Another new attraction is the redeveloped Oil Street Artists District involving younger artists. The project is called OI. We want to build up an uh, image that we are a young and energetic space for young artists and for the community. So in English, OI is just sound like saying hello, greetings to each other. Leslie Lau says it's a place for artists to get started and grow. In the ecosystem of art and culture in Hong Kong, which has been very well developed and very diverse in recent years, as for OIT in this ecosystem, I think it pays the role as an incubator for the young art workers in Hong Kong. The project involves guest curators like Chung Yung, who in turn connects with local artists to show at Oil Street. We have uh, invited sex artists and to have some try out of their ideas. Oil provides the opportunities for local artists to execute their ideas and concepts freely because they don't have the burden of selling artworks, so they could do a lot of experience in oil. It's one small but important part of Hong Kong's growing art scene, and it's more than art. It's part of improving the quality of life amid the hustle and bustle of this dynamic city. Coming back to you, Suhania, isn't that what M Plus and the West Kowloon Cultural District are all about? You know, you're right when you say the West Kowloon Cultural District is adding something substantial because we have cultural institutions situated in a park. And this sense of well being now, especially as we're coming out of a pandemic, is more important than ever. A place for respite, for rest, for relaxation, for learning, for pleasure. For challenge. Thanks, Suhanya. That's all for now on Spotlight Hong Kong. Remember, you can see all the episodes on Euronews.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>